this video I'm going to be going through with you how to sand your race car. Everything I'm going to tell you now also applies to sanding any other wood project that you might have that you are needing to do some sanding on for finishing off purposes. Okay, so go, let's get started by talking about sandpaper. In woodwork we start um, with a different variety of grit sandpaper than we might in metals. Okay, we start with a much lower grit, so it's much coarser. Generally speaking, your first one that you use is going to be your 120 grit or P120. Then you go 180 and then 240. After 240, it's then a choice as to whether you choose to continue going up to some higher ones from there or apply a finish from there. And sometimes it really just depends on what kind of finish you're going to be applying um, with your project as to whether you would go up to those kind of heights or not worry about it. Okay, so in this room, sandpaper is found in a basket off the side. Um, if you can't find it, come and ask me. In the other rooms, it's different colours, so I'm not going to go through colours. Um, but your grit sandpaper, let's just have a quick look to figure out how do we tell which one it is. So for most of them, there's going to be some kind of a printed number on it with a P in front. And the one with the P in front is the number that you're after. There's lots of numbers all over the place, but it's the one with the P in front that you're after. Now, if it doesn't have a number printed with a P in front of it like that, hopefully someone's handwritten it on there with a P in front of it, okay? If you were to break this one in half, for example, and you didn't need part of it because you want to make it smaller, um, or even one of these other ones, you would tear that in half again. You want to make sure that both pieces have the grit on it because it can be quite tricky to tell what grit it is um, when it's not actually written on the back. So in order to know, we want to be able to have that written on there so we can tell we're picking up the right ones, okay? And I would advise you not to use one without having it written on there. Now these pieces are all brand new. I've cut them for the purposes of the demo because I didn't think there was much in the basket that looked any decent. So I'm also going to quickly go through with you, how do you tell whether a piece is useful or not? This piece here, majority of it doesn't look too bad, but you can see that there are some kind of glossy embedded pieces where it's kind of started to clump up in the sandpaper. Um, that's probably because it's either very resinous or there was some finish or paint involved. I'd avoid that sandpaper if possible. Okay, because even if you can get those large chunks out, the other bits are still gonna be clogged up. Okay, so that one, Still got some usable sections on it, but the main part of it is useless. This is another good one to tell. Anything that looks like this or worse with this many creases in it, where you're starting to get bald patches, where there's just no sandpaper left in the grooves and creases. You're reducing the efficiency of using it significantly. Okay? So you wanna try and avoid using paper it looks like this as well. This is actually one that could just go in the bin. It's been very well used and utilised. Uh, it's done its job. It's time to throw it out. It's never going to give you a nice good cut back that you need from a 120 grit sandpaper. Okay, so that's bin worthy, that one there at the end of its life. Okay, so those are the kind of things you're looking to avoid. Anything less than that, you're probably fine to keep using it to be honest. Okay. Alrighty. Other things to utilise with sandpaper. We have cork blocks available. Now cork is better than using wood because it's slightly more flexible. So sometimes in metals, for example, we might get a, um, a wooden block, wrap our sandpaper around that and use that for sanding. But metal's not very flexible and usually stays fairly flat, etc. Whereas in this, we might actually want to have a bit of a, a rounded edge on something and, and or material might not be perfectly flat along the whole surface. And the cork block gives you a little bit more of an allowance with that when you've got your sandpaper wrapped around it to kind of follow some of those curves and grooves a little bit more. This is a personal preference thing. I personally don't particularly like wrapping my sandpaper around a cork block. Um, other people do. It's, it's entirely up to you whether you choose to use one or not, but it's there in case you want it. Okay. What can be sometimes useful is if you are trying to sand it inside of a hole or a concave thing is to actually wrap it around some dowel or something like that, that can often be quite useful. Um, but I personally prefer to use it without a wooden block for my sanding, but it's just up to you. I will show you what it looks like using it so that you've got those options. Okay, why 
do we go through different grades of sandpaper when we are sanding? With everything, efficiency is the name of the game. You want to be able to get through in a timely manner so that you're not wasting your time with what you're doing. If we were to start with the finest grade of sandpaper that we need for a decent application of a finish, it's going to take us forever to get through some of the bits and pieces that we have to remove from here, the dents and scratches and things that might have appeared along the way, your pen marks, all the rest. So what we want to do is we want to start with the coarsest sandpaper we can. It's going to remove those things nice and quickly without compromising the shape that we need and any other areas that we need to stay the same. Okay, so we can go down to coarser grades of sandpaper if we had to. And if you're doing something like carving, you often do use those finer ones. Or if you had a particularly large um, kind of, let's say you had a large chipped out piece and you really needed to smooth that area over to try and disguise that, that happened and it's not crucial to your design for that to be square, you'd probably go with some of the coarser ones to start with. But um, for your standard every day, I'm now going to sand this up so I can apply a finish. You want to start with your 120. Okay, that's a good one to go with. If you only had minor markings, but it was otherwise incredibly smooth all over already, then you probably would start with a higher grade. But for now, until you gain some experience and are able to tell the difference in those situations, start with your 120. Now you can see I folded this in half and folded it in half again. If I just fold it in half, it slides all over itself like this. I fold it in half again, it grips a lot better with what I'm doing. And I've got a few more options for edges and things that I can use as well. Okay. Now, I've got my sandpaper ready, I've got my thing ready, I've chosen whether I want to have a block or not, etc. Okay. The next thing I need to be really, really sure of when doing this is that I'm always sanding with the grain. Now, it can be really kind of um, tempting when you have a line like this to kind of just sand along that to get rid of it. Okay, but if I do that, I'm going to scratch across the grain in that direction and that tears the fibres and everything and they become quite deep and it's really hard to get rid of those scratches. It takes a lot of work. Whereas when I go with the grain, the scratches that I'm creating kind of blend into the grain quite a lot and the next grades of sandpaper up are able to kind of keep blending that in and smoothing that over and you don't see it. But you go across the grain, it's, it's not going to work. With end grain, you want to just try and sand towards end grain as much as possible. You're going to end up having to go across it at some point. In that case, I normally try to follow the um, lines of the grain that I can see if I can see any. Okay? And just try to keep it going nicely with that. All the radial lines from the, um, the growth of the tree as much as possible. Try and keep those bits um, and keep it going with those to disguise the direction that I'm sanding in. Okay, so sanding. Now I'm applying a reasonable amount of pressure here with my sanding, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm applying an even amount of pressure over my piece. Okay, so that I don't end up creating divots. I do need to watch that because it can be quite easy to do with wood. Start going too deep. Now you want to be careful with dust. All wood dust can be quite nasty for you. So you don't really want to be breathing it in any more than you have to. Okay, so you can see that I didn't blow it off. I just tapped it gently onto the bench and I can sweep that carefully onto the floor later on. You can see that I'm looking very carefully to see how I'm going at all times. I'm looking to see, can I see any more marks? Can I see any dents? Is there any marks left over from my tools? Okay, or from banging onto the bench or anything like that along the way. Okay, so I'm being very careful to kind of keep an eye on it. Just like every other tool that I've been showing you with this, you don't just indiscriminately sand kind of keeping an eye on what's happening at all times as you're doing it. If you can keep maintaining that kind of thought process with what you're doing, 
with um, anything you do in wood or metals, then you will find that you will learn quite well, quite quickly. You should be able to see as well that my timber's coming up a little bit lighter when I sand it. Pine likes to darken. Different timbers do different things in response to UV. Pine likes to darken in response to UV. So when I sand it back, I should end up with a slightly lighter colouring over the whole piece as well. And you can usually tell if you haven't quite sanded enough in one spot because it hasn't quite gotten rid of the darkening all across that surface. Okay, I'm gonna wrap around my wooden block for this one. So you can see what that looks like. I usually prefer, oh sorry not wooden block, cork block. I usually prefer blocks for thinner edges um, because there's more use there I find than over larger surfaces. Okay, so you can see wrapping around that. It can allow me to have a much more uniform, flatter finish on my sanding. Okay. And can sometimes allow me to do larger areas. I want to point this out because I have this particularly large dent here where I hit it with the drill bit. I'm probably not going to sand that out. That would be one that if I wanted to get rid of that I'd have to either, um, I think it's probably a bit too deep to have a go with an iron, um, but so I could try and steam it back out because it's crushed fibres, it's not been cut out, or I could just fill it so I can get some putty and just fill that if I needed to. Not that we'd worry about it for your race car project, but for later on with what you're doing filling it would be an option now you can kind of see that for my edges i'm rounding them over a little bit and i'm trying to use a wide-ish curve and i do that to prevent me from creating too much of a kind of shape with what i'm doing Okay, so there we've got that edge sanded. I've got a little bit of a mark left there that I'd want to get rid of um, from my pen. And a little bit on my edge there, but not too much. And at the moment, it's still quite rough. I haven't quite done the end drain all the way around. So I need to sit here and do this the whole way around. Okay, so that's removed the majority of the marks, or it's removed all of the marks and dents those areas that are going to be sanded out. Once I've done that I can move on to my next grade of sandpaper. Now I've done this bit with the 180 but I haven't done this bit here. I should be able to see or feel a massive difference between how rough and smooth they both are. Okay this is definitely feeling smoother than this here. I can feel there's more fibres standing up etc here and this I'm starting to feel a lot less of that. Sometimes with your 120 you'll, you'll kind of get to this point and go oh look think I've done everything, get your next grade on there and it'll start to show up some things you hadn't seen before. And if that does happen, then go back with your 120. Okay, go back over it with your 120 until you can get rid of those. Okay. Once I've got rid of, and these, these next ones shouldn't take anywhere near as long as the rest of it, as, as your first one, yeah? This one is gonna take you the longest. These two are just getting rid of the scratches from the previous sandpaper. So they really shouldn't take you very long at all. Okay, now you might actually be able to see a visible difference in that. I can see the scratch marks on this here from the sandpaper. You can see the lines coming this way. This one here, I can't see them anymore. Okay, and the feel is incredibly different. Okay, it's an awful lot smoother. Okay, this is still quite coarse and rough. Alrighty. So it's important that you go up to that. Now, if you're applying an oil finish, um, especially, then you'd wanna go a lot finer than this, and then it'll feel almost like it's been polished. And that's when you then apply your oil over the top of that and it goes in really nicely. Wax finishes can sometimes require the same, um, but anything else where it's going to really freeze the fibers of the wood, um, 
like a shellac or a lacquer or a paint or something like that, this is fine. And in the process of you applying your multiple coats of those things, you'll actually remove any extra bits and end up with your nice smooth finish that way. Alright, so that is sanding. Don't forget to always sand with the grain, always sand with the grain. And that moving through your sandpapers is all about efficiency and getting through the sanding process faster. Okay? If you can't find any good sandpaper in the sanding box, please ask your teacher for some more and they should always be happy to cut you up some new ones if you can't find what you need in the sandpaper box. Alrighty people, see you in class.